let's continue with this, like the, the question on, I'm going to do two things here. We're going to talk now about like one, I think generally negative trend line and one positive trend line here. So I've got a couple charts because that's what we do a lot here. Uh, so smart speaker adoption among U.S. adults. Uh, UK is a little different, but not that much different. What we've seen is rapid deceleration in uh, adoption of smart speakers. And that's that's a good proxy because that is the new device. There's more people who don't have one than have one. So, you know, you still have a large potential market. And this is right here, the percentage of U.S. adults that have a smart speaker. And you can see that obviously you're going to have higher, you're going to have very high growth rates when the numbers are small and it's harder to get big growth rates. But, you know, essentially between uh, 2020 and 2022, there's been very little growth. And so what that means is smart speaker adoption sort of come up against the wall. The people who want one of these already have one. And so, and you see it in the marketing that the the sellers of smart speakers are really focused on upgrades, getting people to buy the new devices as opposed to getting new people in. And I think a lot of that is because there haven't been any really new breakout applications, like new ideas out there. There's no Pokemon Go that just came along, said, oh, another 10% of the adult population has, has just adopted this because they wanted that one feature. And then they get the benefit of all the other features. Uh, so... I'll throw that up there. The, the flip side of this is smart home in general is continuing to sort of this ruthless march towards invasion into the home. So again, it, it there's some deceleration there as well. It's like we've gotten through all the technophiles who want these things. Uh, but over half the people in the country, in the US, and we've got some different data for UK, but UK is actually even a little bit more advanced. Um, in terms of adoption, uh, it tends to be a little bit more tech friendly, uh, even though it gets all the products later and fewer features. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, we've got more than half, half the people that have it. There's a lot of companies, there's a lot of uh, different use cases. The TV is one of the biggest. And I should note that this does not include smart speakers. So if you actually, just in the, just the US data, if you include smart speakers, it's almost 59% of the people who have one. Some people consider smart speakers as part of the smart home, but they're so different from an appliance standpoint, we always break the data out. So very traditional smart home uh, products are, are super popular. So, you know, given that, um, why don't, uh, Tom Hewittson, what are your thoughts? I mean, my first thought is that I'm amazed that there are 15% of people own smart home devices, but don't have a smart speaker. I like, I, I kind of like, why not? Like, why would you have like, why would okay, you so have they've got a video doorbell, device? video doorbell, right? They can okay. All right. Phone. So, 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 vi so, video doorbell that kind of that kind of set like sends your phone and that and that. I guess I guess that kind of makes sense if your primary use for kind of smart home uh, is yeah, like being able to kind of say okay, so I'm not in. I'm not. Yeah, I don't well, have a video thermostat. doorbell. Actually, like, okay, so. it's another one. Smart thermostat. So you even said that the smart speakers don't control them. <laughs> don't control yeah, them well, well, I, I mean, this, this, this was this was oh, this was go, going to going to be my point is that the smart speakers. Yeah, I have a I have smart home. I have like smart lights, uh, um, you know, kind of smart thermostat and whatever. It doesn't work reliably with my smart speakers, and and I really can't understand why because the, you know we talk about kind of um, listening to music being the number one use case. Well, that's true. Unless you have smart home, in which case, without doubt, the number one reason that you speak to your smart speaker is to like turn the lights on and off and to to do to do all that kind of stuff. Um, and it, it kind of seems to me that you know, if if there are people out there that have kind of smart home stuff that don't have smart speakers, that then kind of like Amazon and Google are really missing a trick in trying to kind of upsell those people. Uh, because, you know, they've already expressed a kind of an interest in wanting that kind of thing. Well, that was actually the, the most of the growth last year was people who had smart home, who didn't have smart speakers came in. And so, mm. you know, 2020 was just an odd year. So let's just put that aside. Last year, when they're starting to get back to normalcy, they did actually get into more. And it, that coupling, you see it. You see it in the promotions. And Amazon's been doing this mm. for about three years now that primarily they're not selling the 
they're, or they're, I should say their best promotions are a smart speaker plus a smart home device. What do you think, Peachy Jean? Uh, I think one of the things that could be affecting like this like kind of plateauing, it, it, like you said, it's like once someone has it, like it's in there, I think it's a generational thing, is these Gen Z and whoever the next generation technically is, like, like the two-year-olds now, are going to be the first generation that don't know a life without it, right? But I think the next growth will be like as these like high school kids are going into college and or moving into other apartments like we'll find more maybe as well i i think that's part of it it's just they've hit the demographic that would do it whoever's not going to do yeah. it not going to adopt it and then after that we'll see another surge as people start moving into their own places mm -hmm.